Hi, my name is Roseanne Israel. I'm a registered speech language pathologist in Ontario, Canada, and I've been working with children with delayed speech and language development for over 20 years. One of the first questions that I often get asked when I meet parents of toddlers who are not yet talking is whether it's something they'll outgrow, we call those late talkers, or whether there's something that they should be more concerned about and what they should do about it. The first thing I try to rule out when I meet a toddler who is not yet talking is whether there is a language delay or disorder. In order to do this, a number of factors need to be assessed. Receptive language is the child's understanding or comprehension of spoken language. As a speech language pathologist, I want to get a clear idea of what the child understands in terms of grammar, questions, vocabulary, sentence structure, etc. I try to do this by removing the contextual cues from the assessment environment. When a parent is telling a child to put on his shoes while simultaneously reaching for her own shoes or reaching for her keys or her purse, she is giving him environmental cues and that is helping him to understand what she is likely saying to him. In the assessment environment, we would give instructions or comments without the use of gestures pointing or demonstrating. In this way, we get a much clearer idea of what the child understands. Since comprehension develops ahead of spoken language, if there are any difficulties with comprehension or receptive language, it is very likely that we are looking at a child who also has an expressive language delay or disorder. Another factor that I look at when trying to determine if a toddler has a language delay or disorder is communicative intent. There is a great deal of difference between an infant who communicates reflexively by crying versus a child who cries with the intention of attracting his parents' attention. The baby on the left is actually reaching up to make contact with the parent. He is communicating intentionally. A child or toddler who has developed communicative intent actively intends to convey a message to his communication partners or to influence his external environment. By around 9 or 10 months, the infant is already intentionally and purposefully taking an active role in communicative exchanges to ensure that his partner gets what he wants. Now, at this age, he's not necessarily speaking verbally, but it can be something as simple as reaching, gesturing, pointing, grunting, or even screaming. And certainly for a toddler who's not yet talking, we are looking to see that they at least have those intentional communicative actions. Another skill that I like to look at when I'm assessing a child who's not yet speaking is their level of social engagement. Once they've warmed up to me and they're accustomed to the clinic environment, which doesn't take long in my case because I have a very fun, motivating environment, then I like to look at how well the toddler is able to modulate their attention between the parents and the toys and myself. Even a shy or a cautious child should look up from a fun toy when their name is called, someone new walks into the room, or something unexpected happens. A toy falling or a surprising toy popping up should elicit a social reaction. Looking at the parent for confirmation, sharing a smile, or just exchanging a knowing look and then attention back at the toy. A child who is over-attentive to toys, objects in the environment, even electronics such as movies and iPad, has not yet learned how to modulate their engagement. And that is often a problem for language learning because typically developing children naturally learn language from what they overhear, even when we think they aren't paying attention. Play skills are also related to language development and there are various stages of play as it emerges. The first stage is exploratory play where infants are exploring the textures, tastes and functions of toys by mouthing and manipulating them. Functional play is where infants and toddlers begin to use toys as they were intended, for example banging a drum, stacking blocks or posting shapes through a shape sorter. In symbolic play, the child begins to understand that he can use an object to represent something else. For example, using a banana as a stand-in for a phone or holding a hairbrush in front of his mouth as a microphone.
The emergence of symbolic play represents a higher level of cognitive development, and it's closely related to the child's realization that words are symbols for objects and ideas. Research shows that the emergence of first words are very closely associated with the emergence of symbolic play. In sequenced pretend play, the child is able to sequence multiple steps, for example pretending to heat up a bottle of milk, then feeding a toy baby, wiping its mouth, pretending to wash its hands. The emergence of sequence play is cognitively linked to the sequence of ideas, i.e. combining words. For the purposes of assessing toddlers, I do not progress beyond the stage of play. Another important factor I look at when I'm assessing a toddler who's not yet speaking is the number of words, if any, in his repertoire. Now, I'm not just interested in quantity, the number of words, but in the quality. I'm looking to see that he has a basic range of nouns, action words, place words such as up and down or off, as well as some basic describing words such as hot, cold or big. I also want to be sure that the types of words in his vocabulary follow the typical developmental expectations. For example, a child's first words are usually not the names of colours, shapes, letters and numbers. More typically, they will be the names of important people, objects in his environment, favourite foods or favourite toys. I always want to know if the child has been making weekly or monthly progress in his acquisition of language. Typically, Toddlers learn at a rapid rate, so even if they start off a bit late, we want to see steady growth and development. There are some red flags raised when parents report regression or loss of words that the child used to have. This is by no means an exhaustive list of skills that I consider for an assessment, but there are some of the more important factors that may indicate a language delay or disorder. If there are concerns in one or more of these areas, further investigation parent coaching, training, and possible direct therapy will be required. This brings me to the question of the late talker versus the child with a language delay or disorder. A child who has good receptive language skills, communicative intent, engagement, and play skills, but is still not yet talking or speaking very few words, may be one of those late talkers. A late talker is generally considered to be a child who has fewer than 10 words between the ages of 18 to 20 months or a child who has fewer than 25 words between the ages of 21 and 24 months or has fewer words than 50 words at the age of 2 to 2.5 and, and has no or very few word combinations. The implication is that these children will simply outgrow it. We've all heard those stories about parents and grandparents who didn't say a word until they were three or four years old and then started talking up a storm overnight. Unfortunately, it's usually not that simple. I typically like to see these children every few weeks to give parents some strategies to help facilitate language. Some of those late talkers will respond really quickly once the parents begin implementing the techniques. But if they don't respond soon, then I start doubting that they really are part of this unusual group of children who can figure things out for themselves. One of the problems with leaving it and doing nothing is that not all late talkers do figure things out for themselves. Even if they do eventually begin speaking, it can cause a lot of frustration when a toddler is not able to communicate and that in turn leads to behaviour difficulties that can be very stressful for the family. There is a subgroup of toddlers who present as late talkers but actually have motor speech difficulties. These toddlers have all those excellent receptive language skills, communicative intent, engagement and play skills, but they are just not able to imitate any of the words modelled by the parents, even when the parents utilises all the strategies suggested by the speech language pathologist. These children were often silent as babies and didn't babble a whole lot during infancy. They may be able to imitate actions and gestures or may have even developed some of their own mini sign language and pantomime to communicate, but for the life of them they cannot figure out how to make the movements they need to put sounds together to form words. These children have motor speech difficulties, 
often called apraxia or dyspraxia of speech, and they will need direct therapy on an intensive basis. In summary, I've spoken about three reasons why toddlers may not develop spoken language at the expected age. These are not the only causes of late or absent development of spoken language, but they are the most confusing for parents as they're not medical conditions and they're not visible, such as genetic disorders or hearing impairment or congenital malformations. Even for speech-language pathologists, it's not always easy to determine the reason for the child's difficulty learning to speak. And it may be necessary to begin some diagnostic therapy in order to get a clearer picture of the exact underlying issues.